Alrighty then. In this video, we're going to go through creating a Node.js app uh, using MongoDB for the, the database. So it's going to be quite simple. We're going to run through it. Um, so, assuming you're on a Mac, the first thing you need to do is install MongoDB. Um, other operating systems may vary, but what we can do is you can say uh, brew tap mongodb forward slash brew, press enter, it will do its loading, and then you can do brew install mongodb community. There we go. And I, yeah, if I spelled that right, I don't care. It Yeah, that looks like it's fine. That will install Mongo and that will be all good. And then what you'll be able to do once that's all installed is you'll be able to say Mongo and you'll be in the Mongo command line. Ooh, right. So let's um, go ahead and create a database. Now to create a database in MongoDB, all you need to do is you just need to say use and then give it a name. So I could say use example. Oh, look at that. It switched to DB example. I didn't create it. The use command created it for me when I typed in use example. Brilliant. So we don't actually need to do anything else with Mongo at this point. So I'm just going to exit out of that. Brilliant. Um, so let's go ahead and init our node project by typing in npm init. Give us a package name. I don't know, MongoDB. Version number, yeah, that'll do. Description, ah, don't want to do that. Server.js, I don't like index.js for some reason. I have no idea why. No keywords, awesome. There we go, author, that's me. Yeah, that's cool. Excellente. So if we ls in the thing now, we have a package.json file which we can have a look at, and all it's going to give us is a bit of metadata about our Node project. That's fine. So, um, what do we next need to do? Well, the thing I like to do is start installing any dependencies I need. So for this one, we have seven or eight dependencies. Easiest way to install them is just to type in uh, npm i and then type in what you want to do. You could also ex install them from a requirements.txt file, but I haven't thought ahead to do that. So we're just gonna go through doing all these. So npm i express, npm i router, npm i mongoose that's how we're going to be connecting to mongodb makes it very easy too easy in fact npm i layout npm i path oh uh, npm i body parser that's so we can actually get stuff from our uh, html well we're not going to be using html we're going to be using ejs which does sort of use html so yeah uh ooh, can't find that. I think it might just be that. It might be a dash. I can't remember. Oh, we've we've already messed up. Dash. It's body dash parser. Oh, there we go. And then npmi ejs. Ejs is like a templating language that we can use to do the the front end bit, which is going to be quite sparse. I must admit. Um, right. So let's have a look. What have we got now? Well, we have uh, some node modules have shown up. So that's just all of those dependencies we just installed. We've also got something called package lock, which has a description of all of our dependencies that we've just installed. Excellent. So let's start off by creating a, uh, a new folder. We'll create one called public and we'll create one called views. We then want to go ahead and create a file. Let's create two of them. We'll create one called server.js and one called root, uh, roots.js, whatever, that'll work. And let's go ahead and open server.js. Well, it's empty because we've just created it. Um, so what do we need to do for the server? This is gonna be really quick. All we need to do is basically say, um, we wanna use those folders we just created, the view and the public folder. We want to set the view engine to be ejs. We want to start the express app we want to have it listen on a port so that any time a request comes in on one of our on the port that we're going to expose that we actually handle it. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, Kant's path is require 
path. This is just declaring some dependencies. Const express. This is how. We're, this is a great little uh, module. This is makes things really easy. Like that, and then we also want to have layout as well. Require uh, express layout. Actually, I may not have installed the right one. Thinking about this now. Yeah, I might not have done. Const roots is going to be equal to require. Oh my god, he can't type. Dot forward slash root. Now we haven't actually defined this yet, so this will crash if we actually start doing anything. Then we need to actually start the app. We create an instance of express like this. You may be wondering why we're using, uh, if you if you are wondering anyway, why we're using const for all of these declarations. It's because we're not going to be reassigning them. Um, if you wanted to, you know, reassign them, I don't know why you would. You'd type var or preferably let because let is block scope, meaning um, it only operates within the block that we're of code we are operating on. Although this is the sort of global block here. Then we want to also have a body parser like this. I'm just going to require body dash parser. So this is, the, this is the really boring bit of the video, I must admit, because this is just going through some basic setup. Even the server stuff is really boring. So next, we want to set um, the views. Um, we need this so we can actually access the front end that we're going to do. So do name views like this. We're also going to actually set the views folder as a static folder so that we can access everything that's in there. We'll say app set uh, view engine um, and like I said earlier the view engine we're going to be using is EJS. This is a templating language. Makes things quite nice for us. Next we want to define some middlewares and all this is going to be is just an array. So we want to say layout. Create an instance of layout. Then we just, like I say, uh, take those folders that we created earlier, the public folder and the views folder, and we just allow the uh, Node.js app to access them as static folders. And well, the way we do that is we use the path module. We do der name, and we do views for one. And we do the same thing again. Oh dear, he can't type. But this time we're going to do it for the public folder. Okay, so hopefully everyone's following along with this so far. Nothing too complicated. Going through things at a pretty slow pace. Okay, body parser. Um, we this is something that you really should pay attention to this next step because this is the thing that everyone has problems with when they set up body parser. Um, you need to set body parser encoded, and then you want to open your brackets and then create an object and call it extend uh, and have extended uh, false. Really important you do that because it does seem to kick off a lot and one of the things that you'll see online is that people moan about not being able to set up body parser and just not doing things right. Um, so it's just something to be aware of that you're going to want to set that up. Then we want to say app use and we want to actually use those middlewares we just created. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually specify how we're going to access the roots of a folder. So like I said, we're going to um, expose a port so that when a user accesses our app, um, they get directed to the right thing. But one of the directions that we're going to be using, using is we're going to have some roots and we're going to have that router file that we created earlier do all that. So we can say app use just forward slash and then we'll say roots. And then everything that every root that we depend that we define that ha starts with a forward slash will get sent to the roots file and that will handle it so it makes our app nice and modular then I'm going to be a bit naughty I'm just going to define our port here we could do it when uh, in an m file which is sort of hidden but we don't need to do it for the purposes of this example finally in this fo uh, file we just need to say app listen on the port pass in a little function a nice little lambda over here um, we don't actually need to do anything here, um, but we could just say something like uh, console log uh, app is running at port and then do dollar sign squiggly brackets 
pass in the port, do that, and do that. And notice here that I'm not using uh, speech marks, I'm using the weird backtick symbol. Um, that's so we can do this little bit here, so we don't have to do like, a, we don't have to concatenate strings. So, that right there is all good. The server should be all fine. We'll soon know when we run it if there's issues with what I just did there. Um, next, we're going to create our roots file. Well, we've created the roots file. We're going to start messing around with that. This is where we're going to do all of our stuff uh, to do with the roots. And we're also going to include stuff about the database in there. Reason I'm only doing the, in the database stuff in here as opposed to doing it in a separate file is because we don't need to waste time for the tutorial. So here we go. Roots, we are going to say uh, require express again. We need that. And then we're going to say router require, you guessed it, router. Then we're going to require the most important module of this tutorial, mongoose. Okay. We then need to define the URL that we're going to use to connect to the database. So MongoDB by default is on localhost port 27017. So we say const URL is equal to MongoDB colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 27017. And then we can also define the database that we used here. So we can say forward slash example. And that will only connect to our example database. Next, we need to invoke a promise for MongoDB, a global promise. So we say global dot promise. And let's connect to the database now. Just take this, go connect, pass in the URL. Uh, we also need to add some uh, little parameters because there are a few methods that are deprecated as default with Mong uh, Mongoose, so we need to explicitly mention what we want to do. For th those things are uh, use new use uh, use new URL parser, and we want to set that to be true, and use unified topology, and that also wants to be set to true. Um, the reason why we're having to explicitly set these things is so that it doesn't moan at us when we run this app. Um, it, not that it really matters too much, but it could break things. The reason they make you explicitly state things as true is so that they have backwards compatibility. So people who are already using an, uh, Mongo, uh, Mongoose don't have to start explicitly, or, or don't have their apps broken by the use of these new um, modules or yeah parts of code. Next, we can define a schema. So for this app, we're just going to create like a, a simple shopping list app or something like that. So we're going to create a schema and all it's going to have is just an item that's going to be a string. So const item schema. And this, this is basically going to define the shape that our documents take because Mongo uses documents as opposed to using like standard rows and columns like a normal relational database uses. And a document is very similar, although it's not the same as a JSON document. Uh, so we, what we can do here, let's just create this new schema. Mongoose.schema, open brackets, squirrely brackets. And now we can start defining what um, is going to go into our schema. So like I say, we're going to have something called item, and that's going to be a type string. If you wanted to define more, you just throw a comma in there, start doing other things. So let's say maybe purchased, and we could use a boolean, and you know that's how you'd start defining more uh, schemas. But for this, we're going to keep things nice and simple. We're just going to have one item. It's going to be a string. So all we're going to have is one form, and then we're going to load those from the database. So let's now go ahead and create our model. So for this, we're going to say const item is equal to mongoose dot, uh, what is it? It's dot model, that's it. And then we can say, okay, this is called the shopping list model, right? And we'll pass in the item schema for this. 
So this creates the model for our collection. And the first argument is the name of the collection. So in this case, shopping list. And this, uh, the second argument is a schema that will be used, right? Um, so what's going to happen is we're going to have this new, because when we create this and add something to this um, collection, it's going to be created in the example database. So we don't have to explicitly create this. We essentially are doing it right here, which is brilliant because we don't actually have to create the database ahead of time. We can sort of create things on the fly, which is really nice. Next, let's just create some basic routes. So say router uh, get, this is just your standard route into the application. Rec rev, so that's request and response. Then we're gonna have a little lambda function and we'll say res render, we'll do index like that. And then we just need to close the question like that. There we go. Um, okay, so what else do we need to do? Let's quickly, before I forget, let's say module exports.router. That's so if you remember from the previous um, file, the server file, we imported router. Well, that's how we're going to do it. We're going to export router from this file. Um, next, we want to create a, another get, and this one is just going to be dot items forward slash items and all we're going to do here is we're just going to render a list of items so response lambda like that and we'll close it before i forget okay um what do we need to do so we need to basically say we take the schema and we're going to query the schema and what we're going to query it for well we just want to get all of the items so just say item dot find uh, in the case of this I just want to get everything so don't pass anything just pass like an empty uh, object so these two little squiggly braces there what we're looking for we're looking for the item and then we pass in uh, some parameters error is possible and we're also going to get the items back so Here's what we do. We then define the little lambda again, like this. Whoops. Okay. And all we need to do then is just say res render. And well, I'm not checking for the error here because I, I should do really, but I'm not going to. All you need to do is just say something like if error, then you'll do something else. There's no point doing it here. So we're just going to say items, and we're going to pass in um, a little object that's keyed by items, and it's just going to have the items object is going to be what we're going to pass to that object. That will make more sense when we come to actually doing the um, EJS. You'll see why that makes sense. Okay. And finally, we're just going to add the method to actually post off to the database. So we can say add item to rec res, do this. Then we are going to let's let's log the item so we can see what happens. So console.log rec dot body. And this is another thing that's really nice about MongoDB. All we're going to do here is we're going to say uh, const data is equal to new item. Pass in the body. That body is going to be from a form we're going to create that's going to have one field, and that'll be uh, the item name, right? Or just the item. So when we do this, it's just going to go, oh, well, this looks like an item, and it's going to work perfectly fine. Even though we haven't actually had to define anything, we haven't had to say our body or item or anything like that. We could just pass in the body, which is great because if we've defined a schema that's that's bigger, that has more items, and we have a form that corresponds to things that are, are bigger, we can just pass rec body and it will just work. It's really nice. Okay, then we just have to say data dot save like this, and then we want to say dot then because this is asynchronous. So once that's done, 
we want to get the item back and maybe we just want to um, do something like say console log um, we'll just say item saved so item dot item saved like that and we then just want to potentially catch an error so we say catch error and again lambda function which we'll pass the res status response status of 400 to say something's gone wrong and we'll just say something like you broke it you fool nice little message for our users there there we go and finally let's just close that that looks all good we've got the exports done brilliant so we've got the router done we have got the server done so uh, if I run this now it's not going to work because we need to then create our views but we can try and run it anyway we can say node server.js yeah it's going to throw an error, error because we haven't got an express layout I knew I typed that wrong I said I'd done that earlier didn't I npm i express layout like that and then we can just say node server and I am an absolute donut of course because that is spelled wrong so let's go and sort that out uh, that's in the roots so wherever put the schema do 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 okay so this doesn't look great schema uh, that looks right that looks right Okay, server what ah see what we've done wrong oh my god what a fool okay we shouldn't be doing require root here we should be doing um we need to be doing whoopsie daisy we need to be in express router we need to create an instance of the router okay i promise it's going to work this time oh my god it's not working because it should be a capital R, not a lowercase r. Okay, this is like maybe the third time now? Third time of the charm? It might be the fourth time. I don't know. It's going to work. Okay, it's working. Brilliant. So that's working. If we were actually run the roots though, it wouldn't work because we need to create the views. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to uh, CD into the views folder. Actually, we're not. We're just going to create... Um, we're going to say views, layout. So we're going to create three files. One's called layout, one's called index.ejs, and one's called item or items.ejs. So let's create this one first. For this one, just a basic HTML template. I actually have one saved over here because I don't want to waste loads of time. All it is is some reference to Bootstrap, some reference to a style sheet that we've yet to create, uh, some more CSS. Uh, this is just a generic um, fave icon thing. We're not going to bother with the fave icon here, but this is just what I set up for all my projects. And then the important bit here is that we have um, a body. So we have this little percent sign, minus body, percent sign, and then the uh, close symbol there. Whoa, dear, dear. Okay, that's fine for that one. Let's now go ahead and create the index. And for the index, we are just going to do some basic HTML. So we're going to say, um, so div class content, we'll call it. And we'll say div. We'll say we need to create that form. So the form is going to have an action of the root that we created to add something to the um, database. So that's add item. Like that, and the method we use, remember it was router.post, so we specify that here and we say method post. There we go. Oh my god, you can't type. Let's close the form actually before I forget, because I always will. Q. 
Okay. Now uh, we're going to create a little div class called form label group. This is a bootstrap class so that we get some nice easy styling without actually having to do anything. There we go. Oh my god, there we go. We're gonna I will type properly in one video, I swear. It's going to happen. Next, we want to define an input of type text. We want to give it a name. Now, very important here that we give it a name um, of whatever we want it to be, but we make sure that we reference that and it matches up with our schema. So in this case, it's going to be name item. It's not ID because some people do that. They create, an I they create the ID and say, oh, ID item and expect that the body parser will pick it up correctly. It's another issue with body parser. You need to make sure that you're using um, name, not ID here. Uh, let's give it a little placeholder as well and just say enter item. Close the input. And let's also just quickly create a button that we're going to not actually show. So we'll say button of, we don't need a class for that. We're just going to say button um, of type submit um, like that. That'll be fine. Okie dokie. Uh, that's looking okay right there for the index. So we'll close that off. And finally, we need to create a file called item.ejs. And this is a, the, the nice one. So we're going to create a list. We're going to say ul for unordered list. We'll say ul class is equal to list group. And then we're going to start doing our EJS magic. So we're going to say percent sign items. So remember how we referenced our object and we said items, items. Well, that is how we know that this is called items here. So we can, so EJS knows, oh, the object items. That's what I'm referencing here. So we can do items for each. So item. Uh, I need to have two of those. I'm not typing this right. Then percent sign close the thing, and we can then do some HTML. Say li class is equal to list group item like that. And in the list group item, we want to also have some EJS templating stuff. So we say the what is it? The greater than sign? The less than sign? I have no idea which way around they ever go and ever will do. Item dot item. Close that. Close the list item. And we also need to close the for loop. So we do that by doing this. So that's um, there we go. Wrong way around as usual. And finally, do this and close the unordered list. And that should about do us. So if we now check this out, uh, we'll just say uh, node or node mon. Node mon's great. If you're ever doing Node.js app, um, application development, I would recommend installing node mon because it will automatically check if you've changed any files and it will reload any web pages you currently have set up. So if I run it, uh, it's crashed because it's already in use. That is my error because I didn't close it properly last time. So we'll say kill all node dash nine. A little handy tip. If you ever find that you your port is already in use and you know that you've already defined this for your node app, you can use this command kill all node dash nine. If it still doesn't work, you've probably got some other process operating on that port. So change your port. This is the simple way of doing it. And you can see it just killed two processes there because they were using the same port. So I say node on server.js like that. Okay, it's all running. So let's go to Chrome and we'll do that. There we go. We have one little thing. Uh, there is actually one more thing we can really quickly do as well. Um, we could do some styling real quick. So let's just go to a new terminal. We'll go to Public, we'll make a directory called CSS. 
we'll create that style.css file we were talking about earlier that's referenced in the layout file and we'll just do some quick CSS in fact I've got some sort of template stuff I use normally so we'll just throw that out just to make it look nice uh, so all this is going to do really just add some sizing add some padding add some nice little colors and that should be all fine just to make it look a bit nicer we'll come back to our process and there we go we have a nice little looking thing so if I add an item right now actually let's check the items route so let's look at items oh look at that there's nothing there okay brilliant so let's go back because we haven't added anything to the database right now so let's quickly just split screen do a little split screen like that we'll go to our nodemon um, terminal and we're going to enter an item so let's say um, I don't know test see that there it's just save the item test now if we go to the test items we can see that it's gone wrong really really glad that error occurred because it's one of the things that will plague you if you ever use a EJS I mean EJS is brilliant I love it um, however it's a bit finickety the problem is here on line 4 of the items file um, where we've got the greater than or less than sign whichever one it is I don't know um, and then the percent sign we should also have um, the equal sign because we are referencing this uh, item here otherwise it just like it kicks off it doesn't work properly so if we try it now we don't have to reload anything because guess what's going to happen no month done it for us so we do that and look at that we've got our test item there so let's just prove this is working again I don't know let's say we want to buy but I don't know books um, one of the things that's a bit dodgy here is that because I've just put console log this is just going to forever load because it doesn't actually do anything once I've I've done this so we could come back here and maybe we want to sort that out a minor little bug what we could do is we could do something like um, come here we could say res render or we could say res redirect and we just say forward slash items like that because once you insert something the thing you're probably going to want to do is go straight to the, the actual page so we'll come back here we'll try and add another item and we'll say something like I don't know T and they go reload straight to the cheeky little list so hopefully that's been interesting I know we've had a few errors during this tutorial I'll try to sort of sort them out because some of them are current errors that you would uh, actually see anytime you're developing node so try and leave those sort of things in so you can learn from my egregious and ever frequent errors so hopefully you found that interesting if you have any questions or anything like that leave them down in the comments below I do try and answer the vast majority of well-formed questions so uh, yeah all that remains to say is thank you very much for watching bye bye if you have enjoyed this content and wish to see more Click the videos and also maybe click subscribe. It's free. I don't know why I'm doing a silly voice.